One of the greatest thefts in history occurred at the end of World War II in Europe, when a staggeringly valuable cargo of gold and other precious items disappeared, never to be seen again. It was actually a double theft, for the treasures were stolen by the Axis and then expropriated by the Allies. The story begins not in Germany, but in another Axis country, the Kingdom of Hungary. Hungary had joined the German-led Axis on the 26th of June 1941, declaring war on the Soviet Union. Hungarian troops fought alongside German, Romanian and Italian forces on the Eastern Front, until catastrophic defeats suffered by the Royal Hungarian Army, the River Don, in January 1943. In early 1944, the Hungarian government, led by Regent Admiral Miklos Horthy, opened secret negotiations with the Allies. Horthy and his government had realized that Germany could not win the war, and feared the consequences of a Soviet invasion of Hungary. They determined to withdraw their nation from its dangerous relationship with the Third Reich, before it was too late. But Hitler got wind of Horthy's plan, the 19th of March 1944, German forces moved to occupy Hungary to keep Horthy on side by force. Hitler desperately needed Hungarian oil for his war machine. Horthy was told that Hungary would only remain a sovereign nation if he removed Prime Minister Miklos Kale and instead appointed someone friendlier to the Germans. A puppet government made up from the fascist Arrow Cross Party took control. However, by December 1944, Red Army forces had begun to encircle Budapest. In the previous few months, the Arrow Cross Party had helped the German SS remove some 440,000 Hungarian Jews to Auschwitz and other concentration camps. The total Jewish population of Hungary had been 800,000 people, and they had also been forced to hand over their valuables to the authorities. The loot was considerable, and consisted of precious stones, jewellery, gold and cash, mostly US dollars. The Hungarians sorted and catalogued this material, making it impossible to identify the link to the previous owners. With the Soviets at the gates of Budapest, the Germans and Hungarians conspired to get this loot out of Red Army hands to safety. Hungarian Army Colonel Arpad Toldi worked with the SS to put together an evacuation plan. A 46-wagon freight train was commandeered for the operation. So how much loot are we talking about? As well as gold and jewellery, gemstones and cash, there were also cases packed with watches, pearls, silverware, china, valuable clothes, oriental rugs, cameras, stamp collections and at least 500 valuable paintings. The Hungarian government and Jewish organizations put the total value today at about four and a half billion dollars. The loot was packed into 24 of the freight wagons. Fifteen more carriages contained Hungarian soldiers and gendarmerie acting as an armed escort, plus large amounts of food and drink, and a further seven cars were loaded with miners, presumably to help bury the loot at some point in the future. A total of 213 people travelled aboard the gold train. The destination was German-occupied Austria, where Nazi loot was being hidden all over the place. Colonel Toldi commanded the train. As far as he was concerned, he was moving Hungarian government property to safety. His greatest fear was Allied air attack on the train, as Allied aircraft regularly shot up any trains that they saw moving. Departing Budapest just before Christmas 1944, the train's first stop was 120 miles west, Toldi ordered several Hungarian army trucks to collect more treasure that had been cached inside Orbanje Castle. A week later, the gold train was at another Hungarian city. Along the way, it collected more small caches of gold and valuables from towns and villages beside the line. For 92 days, the gold train remained stationary, while officials inventoried all the loot. Only in spring 1945 did the gold train start west again. 
By now, Colonel Tolley was convinced that the Red Army was actively seeking his train. The night of the 30th of March, 1945, Tolley, with his family and aides, left the train, telling his deputy, Laszlo Avar, that he would rejoin the train later. In fact, Toldy was sure that the train was about to be captured by the Red Army and was saving his own neck. He was right about the Red Army being close. At that time, they were just under 10 miles away. By early April 1945, Toldy and his party had made it to the Austrian-Swiss border. They carried with them substantial plunder removed from the train, but the Swiss wouldn't let them into the neutral country. Desperate, Toldy turned to SS officer Wilhelm Hottel, whom he already knew well from Budapest. Hottel had access to fake German passports and visas to Switzerland, and it's believed Toldy handed over 10% of his ill-gotten gains to Hottel in exchange, at least four crates of valuables for Hottel and his associates. Toldy was briefly detained in August 1945, never charged, and subsequently disappeared from history. As for the gold train, it stayed ahead of the Soviets and made it to the Alpine town of Werfen in Austria on the 16th of May, a week after the German surrender. Werfen today is most famous for its castle, Hohenwerfen, where the famous war movie Where Eagles Dare was filmed. The train would stay in Werfen for a month, the town having been occupied by US forces. The Americans began to examine the train with great interest and to interrogate the Hungarian troops and civilians aboard it. A counterintelligence corps, or CIC, officer named Morton Himmler took charge of the train, arriving from his headquarters at Salzburg. Himmler ordered the passengers removed and separated from the gold train, now referred to by the Americans as the Werfen train. Some Hungarian soldiers from the escort helped U.S. troops unload the train's contents. Simultaneously, the Soviet Union, which had occupied Hungary, demanded the immediate return of the train and its contents to Hungarian control. So what did the U.S. Army do with all the seized valuables from the train? Most of the material was quickly transferred to a military government warehouse in Salzburg. The valuable paintings were sent to the Salzburg Residenz, a palace in the Austrian city. The Central Board of Jews in Hungary, representing what was left of the nation's Jewish population, demanded that the contents of the train be returned to Hungary. Efforts could then be made to return the valuables to their rightful owners, but the US Army refused to do this. Incredibly, the contents of the Hungarian gold train were sold off through army exchange stores in Europe in 1946 while some valuable pieces were auctioned in New York City in 1948. The proceeds of these sales were given to the International Refugee Organization, the IRO, set up by the US in 1946 to sell ownerless property for the benefit of non-repatriable refugees. But plenty was simply expropriated or stolen by US Army personnel. Major General Harry J. Collins, commanding the 42nd Infantry Division, which was occupying that part of Austria, requisitioned pieces, including furniture, for his home. Likewise, Brigadier General Henning Linden, the division's deputy commander, and Major General Edgar Hume, chief of the military government in Austria, also helped themselves to china, rugs, silverware, glassware, and table and bed linen of the valuable and important works of art that the Americans stored at the Salzburg residence, 200 remain missing to the present day, since last being seen in Austria in 1953. Further, the US government slapped an official notice of secrecy over the whole issue of the gold train, keeping the topic secret until 1998, when President Bill Clinton created the Presidential Advisory Commission on Holocaust Assets in the United States. The committee's less-than-flattering report detailed a catalogue of failings by the U.S. Army in its holding of the train and its treasures in 1945. In 2001, Hungarian Holocaust survivors filed a lawsuit in Florida against the U.S. government for that mishandling of their property. In 2005, the U.S. government settled the case and agreed to pay out $25.5 million to various Holocaust charities but the settlement was only a drop compared to the approximate $4.5 billion value of the gold train's contents at today's prices.
And this story is just the tip of a much bigger problem highlighted in 1949 by the Monuments Men of widespread immediate post-war looting from Nazi treasure caches and fortresses, the Hungarian gold train being the most high-profile media case so far. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also hit the bell icon to receive notifications of my latest videos. You can also help support my channel at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box.